They say history is written by the victor. The only problem for Angela Ledsom is that she seems to have forgotten that we live in the age of TV and radio, where everything you say is recorded. In an interview yesterday with Sky News, she tried to rewrite history, claiming that businesses were always aware there would be costs to businesses and trade barriers would be erected. But they're all just lies. Now, she's not in Parliament, so she doesn't have to stick by parliamentary rules where she can't lie. Here on the TV, she's free to say whatever she likes and not be held accountable for it. Kay Burley isn't going to have the facts and the figures straight to hand to challenge, but people should still know that these are just lies. She's trying to rewrite history and make it sound like this was all foretold. Because of Brexit, this country is in a worse financial state, plus the reduction in immigration. And for people that say that it's too high, you're wrong. People that come over here to work pay more in taxes and healthcare than they do take out of public services. So it's a massive hit to the GDP. Not to mention last year's crops rotting in the fields and queues at Dover, the lack of drivers and the current state of medical supplies that we're currently short on. And as of today, we've now imposed more checks at the borders, which means that prices are going to go up on some foods and some other foods are going to become unavailable. So here's Andrea Ledson trying to change history. And I've added a couple of clips on that completely debunks what she says. Talk to me about Brexit. I thought Brexit was done. Yes, four years ago we left the EU, absolutely. So what's happening? Do uh, you mean the, uh, the, the plant checks? Yes. Yeah, so essentially that is one of the, the points about leaving the single market is that there is increased checks at the borders because you're not in the single market. That's absolutely known about ever since 2016 when the decision to leave the EU was made. Whilst we are, yes, still trading enormous amounts with the EU, we have opened up other opportunities for UK businesses, exports and imports but, too. Yeah, but the government has acknowledged that it's going to cost, uh, cost businesses in the UK an extra £330 million a year. So, again, there are big opportunities from free trade deals. We, we have huge trading arrangements with the United States. As I say, we've signed up to the t this Trans-Pacific Partnership to other today, free trade though, deals. Well, actually, businesses always face the cost of doing business. Businesses knew at the time of Brexit that in leaving the European single market, there would be additional checks at the border because by definition, we were no longer in that single market. There was no surprise about that. So businesses are used to the costs of doing business. I understand that today is a big news story because it's something that finally has come home to roost. With all due respect, it's not about it being a big news story. It's about the small businesses that it's going to impact. We're speaking to a florist later on who will not be able to afford the flowers coming from Holland because she can't afford the checks that are going to have to be done and the increase in flowers as a result. And, as I say, leaving the single market was always going to have implications. But what would you say to her and those trade. like her? Um, so what I would say, I mean, I've had many constituency cases over the years of people who've changed their trading arrangements with the European Union as a result of different frictions, whether it's postal cost changing, whether it's um, border so controls and Europe, so on. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that businesses need to adapt to meet the changing environment. There are huge opportunities so from the rest do? of the world. Well, I don't know her particular circumstances. She can't afford the flowers that, and the extra increase that it's going to cost her to get the checks before she brings them over from the Netherlands. So there are many parts of the United Kingdom that are flower growers themselves, and there are other parts of so the world So she shouldn't buy from Europe, that's well, what you're saying. I'm not saying that at all. I'm well, just you saying, are. I don't know her exactly circumstances. What you're saying. Because we're the government of the United Kingdom and we will not institute or implement or enact such checks. Uh, and the problem is that the uh, EU and Ireland insist that you have to have a hard border if there is no deal. It's complete rubbish. Even Barney now admits it doesn't happen. I mean, we wrote a paper the other day, a group of us, to say basically that it's wholly feasible to have an open border at Dover as well as in Northern Ireland without border checks at all under existing technologies and procedures. It would have been an act of self-harm if we'd gone ahead with it. It would have increased costs for people, and we are trying to reduce costs. So that's the purpose of not going ahead with them and trying to ensure that the border flows as smoothly as possible, which benefits everybody. Free trade is hugely advantageous to consumers. If you look at small deliveries of things like cheese, you were talking about 71% increase maximum level on the retail price. This is a Conservative government that doesn't care about the average working person. Rishi Sunak finds it absolutely hilarious a guy's mortgage has gone up by a thousand pound. 
and you can see him laughing at this constituent in the video that's on the screen now. Thanks for watching, don't forget to hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.